talk about war stories. And uh, if you could just quickly introduce yourselves, I want to talk about something that's happened in the field, that a change that was done that someone didn't really think through all the implications for down the road. But first, tell us who you are. All right, uh, my name is Greg Lehman. I am a uh, technical manager for uh, AECOM in Denver, Colorado in the Process Automation Department. Thank you. All right, I'm Jim Garrison. I'm a senior specialist with AE Solutions in Greenville, South Carolina. I do uh, safety instrumented systems. So you're both involved in ISA as volunteer leaders, but we really want to focus here about what you've seen in the field. So let's talk war stories. Change you saw happen that really wasn't planned out well. I, I can think of a pretty good example. Uh, a little over a year ago, I was tasked as the uh, commissioning manager for the uh, for a compre gas pipeline compressor station in Kansas. And uh, we, were, we were tasked with the balance of plant. There was other commissioners there doing the unit commissioning on the compressors themselves. Uh, during the commissioning of one of these units, um, a differential pressure transmitter over pressured, uh, over pressured set point and uh, shut the unit down on a continuous basis. Now what this is, is a, is a strainer, uh, a screen that is put at the inlet of this compressor that catches anything coming down the pipe to protect this unit. So there's a differential pressure transmitter across uh, sensing and monitoring the pressure and lets the operator know when it is getting plugged. So as it was shutting it down constantly, the commissioning uh, manager on that unit decided to remove the interlock and manually physically watch the pressure rise in an attempt to manually shut it off just so he could see just how much pressure was on it. Uh, he positioned the technician at the uh, control panel near the reset button, near, near the emergency stop button, uh, and said, okay, let's go. He's watching the gauge, loud boom pop, screen pops through, he yells, kill it, by then he'd already killed it, but the aftermath was pretty astounding. This is a metal screen that was crunched through, and so there's other ways it could have been uh, the way he could have approached it, let's say, is just raise the set point a little bit at a time, you know, but, but to, to your question as to uh, maybe a little bit more research should have been done. What was the failure pressure of that screen? And knowing that, don't go near there. You know, you know that it's going to fail at that point. But he thought he could be quicker than the machine, and as proven, it was not. He was not. As in much of automation, moderation. That's right. Right. Yes, exactly. Jim. All right. Uh, the story that comes to mind for me is a little bit different. It uh, doesn't relate necessarily to a control system, but more to instrumentation. Uh, we had a client that was doing a, a using about 30% hydrochloric acid in the uh, chemical process to break things down. Had big glass reactors at 30% HCl, highly corrosive. So uh, we were doing temperature monitoring in this reactor and had specified tantalum sheet thermal wells. Uh, Specified the instruments, they were ordered, they were sent directly to a, an equipment fabricator that installed them in the reactor. Uh, it got to site, they were going through startup, and, and made it probably a month, month and a half through startup, and then we get a call one day that said that the transmitter was leaking. So my initial thought was, well, they must have a gasket or something that's bad. Uh, so I said, well, y'all you know, didn't just take a look at the installation. He said, no, it's, it's leaking out of the transmitter itself from where the wires are coming out. I said, okay, well, shouldn't be doing that. Uh, so they drained the reactor and, and when they uninstalled this thermal well, there was nothing but a flush flange. There, there was no thermal well anymore. Uh, what they determined had happened was apparently the tantalum sheath is a slip-on type that may be tack welded in a couple of places to hold it and then when it's pressed in, it, it stays pretty tight. It, what it appears is that someone thought that that may have been a shipping cover and peeled off the tantalum sheath and threw it away and exposed the 304 stainless thermal well, which didn't last real long. Uh, dug a little bit more, it was during a startup, it was a time when people are, are kind of used to instruments not working right. Uh, because we asked them, we said, didn't you notice that the transmitter went blind? Because obviously <laughs> you, it, it quit talking once it dissolved. And they said, we got a lot of instruments here that don't work, and they kind of flake out, and we just didn't really think anything about it. Uh, so, come with some of the lessons learned there are one from a specific specification standpoint. Make sure 
that if you specify things for a very specific reason, that everyone knows the importance of key components. Uh, from an installation standpoint, when they were doing the, the checkout, make sure the guys doing the checkout realize that if my highly corrosion resistant components need to be highly corrosion resistant and there's you know slide on materials or things like that, that they're actually in place. And then another is just during a startup, if I've got things weird like transmitters that work great for two weeks and then all of a sudden quit working, maybe investigate that a little bit quicker. Uh, so that, that was the case that we were in too. Well, good, good war stories. And maybe the manufacturer of the sheath could make it not look like a shipping cover. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> and it could have been, you know, it, it was at a time, honestly, when uh, materials costs were very high. So it could have even been someone, you know, people steal copper all the time. Tantalum has a really high value to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we didn't pursue down that path, but that is one option. Uh, but something just a simple, kind of inherently safer design. What we ended up replacing it with was a, an electroplated tantalum thermal, so you didn't have a sheet that was a thin material that could be potentially removed. It was, it was permanently uh, bound together with a thermal. Oil. Sure, get rid of the weakest link. Exactly. Design it in. Excellent. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Nice You're to welcome. see you as always. Thanks.